Hi guys, Chris and PJ here live in the Dream Giveaway Garage. Hello everyone. Today is Mailbag Wednesday. We are going to talk about Camaro. That's all we're going to talk about this entire episode. PJ, how's your Honda? Uh, doing better than the, the questions that we have for the Camaro. We're only going to talk about Camaro, PJ. <laughs> when we bought the Camaro, we got this big binder. And you can see on this binder that there's already a little bit of rake here on the rear of the car. We, everybody asks us, why isn't the Camaro the stock ride height? Do you guys not remember the 80s and the 90s when you'd run to your super shops and you'd put some air shocks on the back of your Camaro because you wanted that sort of, that raked look? Because that was bad, beep, 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 right? Back in the day. So, uh, no, I checked. It does not have air shocks on it. I'm going to be talking about springs and shocks here in a minute. Real quick, because I know the paperwork might bore some of you guys. Original window sticker showing it's a genuine SS, and that's going to lead us to the first question of Mailbag Camaro, and that is, is the hood correct? Yes, it's the original hood to the car. It is correct. It is a correct 1969 Super Sport hood. They come with the louvers in them. It's 100% correct. If you guys think it's supposed to be a high-rise hood, you're thinking something else. That is the correct hood for an SS350 that year. And I'm standing by it, right, PJ? I am standing by it. It's right there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, original, what else do we have here? Original owner's manual. Original uh, new vehicle warranty. It's out of warranty, guys. Original Protecto plate. That's pretty wild. Yeah. That, you know, back in the days before computers, remember, this is like they did it for credit cards. You'd swipe them on that thing. You know, the imprint machine. Yeah. And so it's reversed there so that it comes out forward on the thermal paper or whatever it is. You guys remember all that stuff from way back when. Anyway, uh, so that comes with it. Is there really $20,000 of restoration receipts in this binder? Yes. It's a big binder. It's a big binder. And look, I didn't do this. This is how it came to us. Here's all the receipts. And the receipts go on and on and on and on. $23,767.94. So... Someone, the next question, if there's that much in restoration receipts and in engine work and in performance work, why isn't the horsepower of the engine higher? Well, here's the thing. Just because you're spending money doesn't mean your goal is more horsepower. It may mean that you want a more reliable engine, that you still want a streetable engine. Your goal may have been just to have the best engine that you could have, but not the highest horsepower engine. You could have spent 20 grand and made that 800 horsepower. But how long would that 800 horsepower have lasted you? The question, question you have to ask is, what if I buy top shelf components and doing a restoration, and I want this to be a very streetable, fun driver that I can get in, turn the key, and go from Florida to California, from New York to Washington, from you name it to you name it. And that's what they did on this restoration. Their goal was not all out horsepower numbers. Their goal was building a reliable, high performance vehicle that could go miles and miles and miles and not be a trailer queen. That's how they spent their money on this restoration. And I've got to remind you guys, this is not a stock concourse restoration. It's not like the, the Corvette that's in front of me and be, behind you guys on the camera that was an NCRS top flight survivor or the 65 Corvette, which was done up entirely to stock specification as it was in a new car showroom in 1965. This 69 Camaro was built to enjoy, and that's what we want you guys to do. So I appreciate you asking these questions, but remember, it's not a concourse restoration. It's a fun restoration. Kathy okay. has a question here, well, maybe a statement. Out of warranty, I'll sell you one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's Kathy on the phone to sell me an extended warranty. Why, yes, Kathy, I'll take the extended warranty. 
<laughs> okay, guys, raise your hands. Raise your hand if you get more than 10 calls a day for someone trying to sell you an extended warranty on your car. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> anyway, a uh, couple things here. Uh, we were talking about the ride height on the back of the car. Uh, two things I'm going to point out to you, and I put a call into QA1 because there are QA1 stocker shocks front and rear on this car. And I'm asking, I'm talking to Dave Koss over there about ride height. So there's premium shocks on the car, but there's also brand new five link five leaf uh, rear springs on those. Chris, this so, is a big document you've got here. <laughs> I, I, it is huge. So if we look right here, guys, we have OER, so that's uh, Original Equipment Reproductions, RL5. That's a 67 to 81, five leaf rear spring, 219 bucks right there. And that, that's stock. So someone asked, what would it take to bring that ride height back to factory stock? Well, one, I think it looks cool the way that it is. I hope that you agree with me, but even if you don't, I'll answer your question. What will it take to bring it back? I think, and I'm waiting for Dave Koss of QA1 to confirm this for me. I think all you'd have to do is to put different shocks in the back and maybe put some GM gray spiral um, uh, shocks, some stock shocks. However, you wouldn't have the performance that you currently have on this car. So the next question. Is, since this has aftermarket shocks on it, does that make it a resto mod? Not really. You kind of have to, to have a resto mod, you have to think first about the engine. Is it a modern engine or is it a huge built pro touring engine? It's, it's neither. It's the original numbers matching block as far as we know, so it's a built 350. So even if you have some aftermarket parts on here, does it make it a resto mod? No, no. And that means that if you wanted to, and again, I want it because I've driven this thing and it's a load of fun. Could you easily return it to bone stock? Could you then get it points judged if that's what you wanted to, to do? Of course you could. It would be very easy to return to that. And even the engine, it's not hard to return that engine to, to bone stock. Go ahead. Mike Brown says trick flow heads are very reliable. Not only are they reliable, but they're excellent performing. And you can see right here, Mike Brown knows what he's talking about. These have the trick flow heads on there. And those trick flow heads, I think I, ha I know I have more information here on them, but whether I can actually get to them or, or not while I'm kind of going through Chris, here do or most not. people have this much documentation on a car? Most people don't have this much documentation on their children, PJ. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, can you tell me what kind of forged pistons your children have? <laughs> if, if your children are cars, you probably can, right? No, mo most cars don't come with this level of documentation. McLeod Clutch, again, the person who restored this vehicle, they didn't buy inexpensive aftermarket parts. They bought high-end components, DSS racing. Here we go, Trick Flow, thank you, Mike. Trick Flow DHC 175 cylinder heads for the small block Chevy. And they're painted Chevy orange, so they look stock. Um, love this car. Can we Le see what people are talking about or what, they look, what they're seeing? Yeah, let's do that real quick. So we're gonna come on over here to the Camaro. And PJ, feel free to throw more questions at me while we're doing this. Yes. Ted Larkin says, looks great as is. It really does. So look here, guys. It's got the correct valve covers on it. The heads look right, but they're aluminum. Remember, back in the 60s, on the vast, vast majority of its engines, Chevrolet had cast iron heads. These look like cast iron heads, but they are the trick flow aluminum heads. And the trick is that they look like cast iron heads, but up bum And they flow. What about the stance? <laughs> What about the stance? Okay, so let's shut this real quick. What are they talking about when they, when they say to us that the stances? They ask us, did we lower the front or did we raise the rear? So I have looked at both. And again, I'm waiting for QA1 to give me a, a good answer on this. But what I think has occurred is that we've raised the rear. So instead of it sitting level, it's got a little bit of a rake to it. It's got a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a lift 
to the rear. And that was super, super popular in the 80s and the 90s. If you'd go to a, to a um, out on the street doing some street racing or, or at a muscle car show because it looked badass, PJ. That's why guys would do it. It was before everyone cared about 100% point cars. These cars, you could still buy these cars in the 80s for 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks, throw some good wheels on them, put some air shocks on them and go out and have fun. So it was a whole different hobby at that time because everybody was younger, you were still out, you were cruising, you were having some fun on Friday and Saturday night. You know what I'm talking about? Did it have any aerodynamic gain? Not really. It just looks cooler, you know? But is it correct? No, it's not correct. And what do we mean when we're saying correct? Did it leave the factory that way? No, it didn't leave the factory with that much of an angle from rear to front. It was more level as opposed to angled down like that. So you guys remember those days. Come on, share your stories of uh, hanging out on Friday and Saturday nights with your favorite muscle car, right? Mike Brown says, I love the rake. <laughs> I love the rake as well. Uh, Kathy says that a couple of you don't like the rake and wanted to know what will it take to return it to, to factory stock. And again, I think, and don't quote me on this yet, but I think that all you have to do is to put some stock shocks back in the rear and it's going to drop that back down. The leaf springs are stock height. So the, the leafs in the rear are not lowered and they're not cut. Go ahead. TJ Saddle says, sorry, just getting on. What's the trans? Oh, it's a four speed. It's a Muncie four speed wide ratio. And PJ, go ahead and tell him. Go ahead, PJ. And it has a white shifter knob. Excellent, PJ. There, there you go. A lot of red in this is a factory manual shift car. So that is correct as well. Gotta love it, red on red, garnet red on the outside, medium red vinyl on the inside, console, Hurst shifter, Muncie four speed, 350 high performance engine. Drive, drive it across America. If you win this car and you show up here in the Dream Giveaway Garage, you can feel confident that you can turn that key and wherever you're at in the United States, you could head out in this car. As long as you've got a gas card, <laughs> you'll make it home. <laughs> Darryl must be on the uh, camp of it being a little too off the pitch, but if you take two of the tires off the vet and put them on the rear of the Camaro, it would have a better stance and look better. Which Corvette are we taking them off of? <laughs> off of the 65 or the 71? Don't tell me the 2022. <laughs> Off of the Corvette, off of the 71? I kind of like that idea. But you know what? I think it would give it more of that stance, don't you? If you took the ones off the back of the Corvette, wouldn't it even raise it a little bit more? I think it would. I think so. Anyways, what else you guys got for me today? Any other questions? It's yeah, Mailbag Kathy, Wednesday. Yeah, he says, boy, if I had that in high school, I would have been a guy magnet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Kathy because I've never heard a, someone of the female persuasion say guy magnet, but I have heard plenty of, of fellows from the male's persuasion say chick magnet. <laughs> yes, it's a chick magnet or it's a guy magnet, depending upon what you're looking for. Hurst <laughs> shift knob? Hurst shifter, not shift knob, shifter. That's a, that metal piece that connects the transmission to the knob. See right there, it says Hurst on it. Lap seat belts. Yeah, lap seat belts. And uh, it's got, I think it has shoulder belts as well. Look at this, PJ. Yep. They're hidden up there? Yeah, they're, they're hidden up here. Everybody tuck them away up there. Yeah, they're tucked. You know what? I don't see them there, but they, they must be down on the ground. I see the holders for them. <laughs> what else What else you guys got for me? It's Mailbag Wednesday. We're having fun. We're talking about Camaro. <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, I don't know what we're going to do for Friday It Up Friday. And now we're going to segue over to GTO. Remember, GTO has started. Ride height on this. This looks really good on the ride height, too. This looks closer to stock ride height, huh? Can you give Mike Brown a rear axle ratio on the Camaro? Uh, I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, hold on. PJ, show, show him something fun while I look it up. <laughs> Let, Yeah, I'll tell you what, it does not have a special, and it's hard to read, uh, it does not have a special rear gear 
uh, ratio on here. So my guess is that it's got a 323 ver gear on it. Might be a 308. I don't think it has a 355. That would be the next uh, numerically higher gear from that. So my guess, 308 or 323. Mike, I will look that up and I'll let you know next time we talk. What else you guys got for me? Factory hood louvers correct? Correct. Question mark? They're correct. Guarantee it. Very nice. Correct for 69. Okay. And by the way, I think that on the SS that they were different in early 67. And then did they change the style either late in 67 or early 68? You guys can look that up. But they did change them. But that 69 style is correct. All right, guys. And when you win, you get all of this. Yeah, if you win, you get all this stuff, including the protecto plate that's kind of poking its uh, out of the binder there. You'll get all this. Because it's like the Impala. We had a whole binder full of stuff with it. The Corvette. They won a 188 Corvette. We've got two binders full of stuff on the Corvette. So when we uh, write this stuff on the website and we talk about it, this is where we get this. Uh, this is where we get the information from that we share with you guys. Not and every car has this. Not every car has it, but it's fun when we get it and we can share it with you guys. In fact, here's something else really cool. Look at this: a 1969 Chevy pre-delivery service and adjustment check sheet. How about that, huh? Amazing. Delivery report. Hmm. I wonder if this technician is still around. Hmm. North Carolina. That's where it's so new. <laughs> TJ says, let's get to the more important question answered. What's under the GTO? What's under the GTO? Or do you mean what's under the hood of the GTO? <laughs> what's under the hood of the GTO? Ram Air 3, 400 cubic inch, 366 horsepower, backed by a Muncie wide, uh, close, wide ratio. A four speed and a posse track rear end. That's right. I don't even know how you remember all this. <laughs> There's a lot of cars here to remember. Yeah, a lot of them. cars to remember. Yeah, I got most of them. Plus, our other, we were talking about the Nissan yesterday. That's our other newest giveaway. Not a muscle car, but it's a cool truck. So, there you go, guys. Let's wrap it up. This was a long one. We'll see you guys tomorrow. More great fun. More great action, more great grand prizes, like a Camaro that might be sitting a half inch too high in the rear. It only happens here live in the Dream Giveaway Garage. See you next time, everyone. <laughs>